Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Ashley McDowell. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. There are some water contaminants on certain parts of the island. We tell you where. Also tonight, the airport is getting some replacements that will help when entering and exiting the plane. And we have the ratings for the local establishments around island. In sports, our back-to-school special starts with a tricky test. Stay with us. These stories and more are next. phone you want now on the best network and a plan that gives you endless data on chat, social, and music apps. Tell your Docomo Pacific rep you want now with access. Docomo Pacific, better together. Some conditions apply. Off a day, Tirwami, and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Friday, August 16th, 2019. The Commonwealth Utilities Corporation is advising the public of chemicals in the water that are above the health advisory level in certain areas. Take a listen. It's PFOS and PFOA, two chemical contaminants that have exceeded the United States Environmental Protection Agency health advisory level on Saipan. They are compounds that are commonly were commonly used in uh, firefighting foams. They're in common products that we all use every day. Teflon coated cookware, you know, spatulas, pans. When you cook, it flakes off. It's in your Gore-Tex clothing or other water repellent type clothing. It's in like Glide tooth floss, you know dental floss, stuff like that. It's in all around us. Carpets, anything that provides water resistance, food packaging, the inside linings of uh, popcorn bags and other instant things like that. So it, there are compounds that are found out there and they have a really strong bond between the carbon and the fluorine fluoride and so it, fluorine and it doesn't break very easily. That's why they stay around, stick around in the water. The health advisory level is 70 parts per trillion. And Yellen says after running tests on these samples around the island, the level showed up at 138 parts per trillion of both compounds combined in certain areas of the island. Every quarter CUC monitors for these perfluorinated compounds. And each time we have get the results, we need to make sure that we advise the customers that are affected by if the levels exceed the EPA's health advisory level. And so we got our samples again uh, in July. July 22, we got the samples and the results came back early August. Yellen says if you do live in the affected areas, avoid ingesting the water at this time until the PFOS and PFOA are below the health advisory level. Customers should not drink, cook, or make ice with tap water. Parts of Southern Garapan, parts of Guala Rai, parts of Susupi, parts of Aslito, parts of Asperdito. Uh, and Chalan Lao Lao in Iliang, and Astrolahi, Kanatabla area, Finasisu, San Jose. So it's quite a, a large area. To deal with the PFOS and PFOA in the water, Yellen says they are waiting on funding for a device that will constantly keep the chemicals at a safe level for consumers. 
We're looking at getting a granulated activated carbon filtration device, uh, GAC is the acronym for it, and that's closer, almost ready to get the funding for it, but we don't have an exact time frame on when it will have it installed. Okay. But that's the way that we will be able to treat these compounds. PFOS and PFOA are unregulated contaminants, but CUC follows the guideline when checking the levels every quarter. Reporting for KSPN, I'm Ashley McDowell. And the Commonwealth Utilities Corporation is continuing to repair, replace, and restore around the island to maintain high levels of power since Super Typhoon U2 hit back in October of last year. Uh, an air brake helps to break the current flow so that you can sequester a small area of poles so that you don't have to take out a whole neighborhood. What happened during U2, we lost all of the air brakes. And so there were about 60 of them. And so what we had to do is go back and reinstall. And FEMA did help pay for those things. And so we basically finished that project, I think, just this week, uh, reinstalling those. And this was the last notified um, incidents uh, where we were advising people that we were going to have a, an outage, but it was scheduled. While the power stays at a pretty constant level, CUC Acting Executive Director Bill Gilmore says there are still repairs that must be made to keep engines running. Our engines are in a good state of repair, but they are needing repair on a regular, ongoing basis. For example, just tonight we'll be having uh, one of our engines, Engine 5, go down and, so that we can do some maintenance on it uh, just for the evening. Uh, that, but we'll have a backup enough reserve power so that nothing will be shut off anywhere on the island. Uh, we will also work on power plant two problem. There's a pipe that needs to be replaced that feeds fuel, and then that'll be all be done at the same time, and then we'll be back up and running normal. But as the season has approached with bad weather, Gilmore says CUC does stay prepared. We are in constant preparation. We regularly meet on a, on a Friday and ask everybody to remind themselves, what do you need to have in place to be prepared? So, uh, and a lot of it is just make sure you have cleanup because any loose debris is your worst enemy. We make sure that uh, we clean everything. We push trees way back from a lot of our power lines because even though it does damage the beauty sometimes, the look, it's better to have a lost limb than a lost power line that could lead to an aggravated problem, which is much larger. So uh, it's, it's, a re it's a constant reminder. And uh, it's important that you're always, everybody's got their materials, make sure that you've got all of your, uh, everything in hand, replace everything that you need, always think ahead. Stay up to date with any of CUC's projects by following their Facebook page or contacting their customer call center. Reporting for KSPN, I'm Ashley McDowell. The Commonwealth Ports Authority is working on a project to improve the Saipan International Airport. CPA is replacing three of the passenger loading bridges. CPA states the project is expected to take 580 calendar days to complete and will be performed in two phases. The first phase consists of mobilizing, staging, and fabricating the three bridges. The second stage is to clear the original bridges. Two of the bridges are scheduled to arrive in Saipan later this year, and the third bridge is scheduled to arrive early next year. Each bridge takes about 100 days to install, with the completion date set for August 2020. The Department of Public Lands has remitted money to the Marianas Public Land Trust. According to the Secretary of Public Lands, Marion Conception Terragazo, $567,508 has been remitted to MPLT from money that has been collected from current land leases. She says, quote, The Department of Public Lands has strengthened its policies and enforcement for all the public land leases and has diligently collected funds due from the leasing of public lands. We are working more collaboratively with leases and stakeholders to continue the timely collections and remittance, remittance to MPLT, end quote. The Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation has released the monthly sanitary inspections by the Bureau of Environmental Health, and here are the results. 45 establishments in Saipan received a grade A, 
13 received a grade B and zero establishments received a grade C for the month of July. These sanitary inspections are of retail, eating and drinking establishments. 90 to 100 is a grade A, 89 to 89 is a B, 70 to 79 is C and below a 69 is closure or suspension. For the month of July, there were no closures for serious violations of health and sanitation standards. For more information, contact BEH or a cop for a copy of the health advisory, visit chcc.gov.mp or for the press releases. Coming up, a canine sense of smell helps police solve these crimes. Find out more after the break. Get the phone plan you're looking for at IT&E. Stay connected with the strongest, widest, and most reliable network in the Marianas. Stream, share, play, shop, and surf the web with super fast 4G LTE data. Whether you need just a few gigabytes of data to get by, or if you want to go further with unlimited data, there's a plan for you. You'll always get the best price. Visit any IT&E store or call us to learn more. IT&E. Explore your world. Ah, the Netherlands, home of the Strope Waffle McFlurry from McDonald's. A mix of delicious vanilla soft serve and caramel waffle cookie pieces. But to get one, you'd have to sneak out of the office, dig out your luggage, wait for boarding group 12, figure out what that means, take a train, take a boat, take a bike, and finally order one. Or get to your neighborhood McDonald's now, because for a limited time, worldwide favorites are here. Around the world is now around the corner. You deserve more. I know it's been hard. Come on, let's go for a ride. Hi, welcome to Dal Rancho. Thank you. Hi, welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Now this feels like home. Dial Rancho, making lives better since 1987. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. Saipan Customs finds drugs and other paraphernalia entering in and out of the CNMI. This is all with the help of a canine's sense of smell. He sniffs any drugs, meth, marijuana, cocaine, heroin, and ecstasy. CNMI Customs works with six dogs, and there is one dog in particular that has been helping Customs out for many years a Labrador Retriever, whose name is Charlie. With Charlie, he's been working with Customs for seven years. He came from uh, Florida. And training for Charlie is non-stop, as keeping his sense of smell at full alert is key. He's a really good dog. Um, for Charlie, he, he really protects you know the community. He does his job. Everything we train him to do, he does it. You know, So what we do, we try to train the dog every week at least three to you know three to four times a week to get the dog you know up there so when he sniffs whatever drugs from incoming passengers or you know post uh, you know the post office when we receive uh, mail and all the stuff even cargo vessels or personal vessels we do inspect those and if you know the dog finds it then yes officer Sasamoto says they do their best to protect all the ports in the CNMI and Charlie is right there along their side. So Charlie goes to every port. Okay. So we have the airport, the post office, seaport, and we also got private mail, uh, post office, right? Mm -hmm. And we do, um, we do go to other ports to, um, you know, search personal vessels, even commercial vessels. But it's not just customs that has the help of canines to detect and find drugs. We got two um, working dogs for DPS. So DPS has the dual purpose dogs, which is the attack and they can sniff narcotics too. Officer Sasamoto says the locations Charlie has used his sense of smell to find narcotics so far is the post office and the commuter airport. On Guam, more allegations have been filed with the District Court of Guam regarding clergy sex abuse, and the AG's office has selected a legal team to assist in water contamination claims. KUAM's Adriana Cotero reports. 
Half a day, CNMI. Here's what's making news on Guam. As part of the Archdiocese of Agana's bankruptcy case, 5 p.m. Thursday was the official deadline for all sexual proofs of claims to be filed with the District Court of Guam related to allegations of clergy sex abuse. More than 220 claims have been filed, and in the past four days, KUAM has learned of several new complaints that were filed in the District Court of Guam two of which are new allegations of sexual molestation perpetrated by former Archbishop of Agana, Anthony Aperon. According to a complaint filed by SSS to protect his identity, he alleges that when he was a minor between 1987 and 1988, Aperon tied his hands to a pew in the small chapel at the cathedral and sexually molested him. In another complaint filed by an individual identified as WWW, he alleges that while he was an altar boy in Agate and Aperon was the parish priest, he allegedly sexually molested more than 30 times. In April, Aperon was stripped of his title and exiled from Guam after Rome upheld its verdict, finding him guilty of sexual abuse against minors. Following the verdict, Aperon maintained his innocence, claiming he was a victim of a group plotting to destroy him. Additional complaints were filed against Father Andrew Manetta, Father Raymond Cepeda, and Father Daniel Cristobal. The Office of the Attorney General has selected a legal team consisting of a half a dozen firms to assist in the PFAS water contamination claims. A contract was executed to retain their services on a contingency fee of 15%, which is half of the 30% fee authorized by the Protehi Hanum Act. Additionally, the CNMI Attorney General has selected also Guam's PFAS litigation team to represent them. The deadline to file for legal services of August 4, 2019 has been determined to apply only to existing parties and does not affect the Guam CNMI lawsuit. With over 100 cases across the country involved in the water contamination claims, the case has been transferred to a multi-district litigation court in South Carolina, which is scheduled for September 6, 2019. Stay connected via our KUAM mobile news app, follow us on any of the social media platforms, and sign up for our weekly email newsletter, KUAM Digital Digest, on KUAM.com. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Adriana Cotero. Thank you, Adriana. Coming up, our Back to School special includes a test and a progress report. Class starts after the break. Marianas Eye Institute. Our office on Beach Road is staffed with U.S. certified eye care technicians, doctors that have received national recognition, and a friendly professional staff that will look after you and your loved ones. With over 1,200 eyeglass frames to choose from and an in-house lab, we can make most glasses in about an hour. And we even feature a mobile clinic to bring eye care to you. Keep your eyes healthy and strong with professional eye care at the Marianas Eye Institute. Hey, go Carters, come early and stay late. We have new summer hours for the Seaside Circuit at Mariana Resort. Daytime is pretty hot, but evenings are pretty cool and perfect for racing. Check in at Mariana's Trekking and you'll be off racing in no time. Bring your fans, bring your friends, and show your ID for a special half a day rate after five o'clock. And check out our other adventures too, like mountain biking, hiking, kayaking, and off-roading. Perfect for groups, perfect for families, perfect for friends. So Go ahead, bring your best friend. Mariana's Trekking, your adventure professional for 17 years. Buenas Buenas sports sports fans. Fans.
Point of sports fans, you know, it's back to school days, which got the KSPN2 Sports Institute of Excellence thinking we should do something special just for that, you know, pay tribute. So we decided to do it in the most appropriate way possible with a quiz. Are you smarter than a fifth grader? The category is sports geography. The question is where did the first local baseball league play? Is it A, here at William S. Regis Elementary School, there was a field long before there was a school? Or is it B, Chalancanoa, before there was a cemetery, before there was an elementary school, before there was a cathedral, there was a field here in Chalancanoa? Or is it C? This field where the Jotan Kizu Public Library is today. Or is it D? Also in Susupi, this is Palacios Field today. Well, the name change came in 1994. Before that, it was called Civic Center Field. Or is it E? This field here at American Memorial Park. Before it was American Memorial Park, it's in Garapan, out toward Punta Muchat. Or is it F, in what was called in those days Lower Navy Hill, Mariana Islands Housing Corporation today? If you said A, or if you said B, you may have been tricked by the question. There were games played here, but they were Japanese teams. The correct answer is E, American Memorial Park, the first league in 1953. Teams included Chamorros, Carolinians, Palauans, the Navy, the Seabees, and Coast Guard all had their own teams. San Roque, Tanapig, and Chalancanoa had their own village teams. The team called the Youngsters won a title in 1954. Other teams included the Braves and Moonstars. The field still stands or, well, lays flat or whatever. Today, the United States government has designated as a baseball softball field people play pickup games here on the weekends with family and friends never realizing that they're standing and playing on a historical monument to the great national pastime of baseball The Pacific Amusement Roller Summer Youth Basketball League rolls on, where now a team that loses rolls right out of the league. Before students hit the books, they hit the floor. Wednesday night at the Kville Gym in the Big Boys Division, the 670 Sonic sent the Titans back to Chinatown to reload. In U16, it was the old Aces bouncing the Rollers beat. So the regular season will wrap up tonight. Five playoff games are on tap for Saturday as this Summer Recreational League will close out before the public school opens up. Well, tonight we're going to tip the Marmar for the top plays of the week that was. The KSPN2 Sports Institute was thinking, hey, you know, since it's austerity, why not splurge? And eight is great. Coming in at number eight, all 220 golfers who finished all 36 holes the same way by sinking a putt at the Governor's Tournament of Champions. Coming in at number seven, well, it's number 11, Aaron Villarin with the rebound and then the 90-foot dribble drive to succeed. Mission accomplished for Aaron Villarin. Coming in at number six, Nick the Quick Saban. No super senior was more super than this senor. Coming in at number five, ladies low gross, Chang Hanley. She's the ladies champion. Coming in at number four, Mark Epicky freaks out the KSPN2 Sports Institute, which is not easy to do. Coming in at number three, Joe Kamikaze Camacho wins the seniors flight and he's not even old. Coming at number two, Ryan Kim finishes second overall in the Governor's Tournament of Champions and number one Saipan player. And 
the KSPNT Sports Top Play of the Week. Tars Olapa finishes third place in the senior flight division wearing the cheapest Zoris that he could find. Tars Zoris Olapa, the Top Play of the Week. Here's the wind-up and the pitch. I don't believe what I just saw! Today's high 88, the heat index 98, the low 78. Humidity 85%. Tomorrow mostly cloudy, isolated showers, winds light and variable. High 88, low 79, seas 4 to 6 feet and falling. Sunrise, 6.02, high tide at 8.03, low tide at 3.09, sunset at 6.39. Thank you, Bob, for that weather report. So I know some things are going on this weekend. Yeah, for sports, this new basketball league, I'm really excited to see. It's going to be Saturday night at the MHS Gym. Uh, the air conditioning's not fixed, so mm -hmm. don't bring a jacket or sweater or anything like that. Yeah. But uh, won't be too cold. I then. think there's something for everybody because mm -hmm. of uh, uh, something's going on at the multi-purpose center. And yep. tell, tell us about that. That is the Opportunity Expo. So for people out there, whether you're looking for a job, you want some new skills, maybe in the field of opportunity, it's plowing time again. Oh, maybe. I hope so. <laughs> All right. Well, hopefully you can make your way out there to the multi-purpose center. It starts at 10 a.m. It'd be a great opportunity to kind of get some info about, you know, the island and to get a new job. If job you're looking. fair, and but it's more than just jobs, right? Yeah, skills too, everything, a little bit of everything. Interesting. It's good, nice way to network, really. Okay. There's gonna well, be a I lot hope of people it doesn't there. Rain. This is. Oh, by the way, August is the rainiest month, 11.8 inches on the average. Uh, September has the most rain days on the average, 23, but mm -hmm. you get heavier rain showers in August because uh, there's no wind. Anyway. So yeah. just, in case you're wondering. I believe that. So everybody should probably be prepared with a raincoat this weekend? Uh, this rest of the month. Oh, rest of this month, should I say. All right. All right. Thanks, Bob. And thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your weekend. Tune in Monday night at 6. All right. Let the weekend begin right now. Good right night. Right now.